So let's take a look at some of these things that we got. Right here, the terminal cup. This is like three or four dollars on eBay. You can get whatever style you want. If you want one, if you don't want one, you can drill a hole and run your wire through and seal it up. That's perfectly acceptable. This glue is ten dollars a can for the big can like this at Walmart. This fabric is pretty nice quality. You can get this on eBay for or Amazon, twelve, fifteen dollars, something like that. You just need enough to do the one box, unless you're going to do more boxes. Some of the changes that we've made to this box is that I've sealed around the port with that polycryl. We've also painted the port. You can see up here on top the parts that are sealed with the polycryl and the parts that are not sealed. That's why you seal it to get that, you know, the nice glossy shine. If you just wanted to spray paint this without sealing it, you will get a really like nasty gray color. But since we sealed it, we get that nice black. On the back side, I've drilled a hole for the terminal cup. Like I said, you don't have to have one of these. These are pretty cheap. Pilot the holes so you don't split the wood. The hole saw that you, you know, required to make this hole, you'd have to buy that or have access to one. Not everybody has one of those. So, you know, if you don't have one of these, just disregard that part of the video. So I'm carpeting this on a, a piece of uh, plywood. You can do this anywhere you want. You just don't want to get the carpet dirty and nasty while you're doing this. So having a nice clean surface of some sort to be able to work on, keep it getting sawdust and dirt and what have you. I've done this in my living room on the carpet. It works just fine. Your wife get, might get mad at you. Whatever you need to do, just be safe. And you know, think about the, the glue overspray. This stuff doesn't like to come out once you put it on there, so try not to spray it over and around things you don't intend to get glue on. So one of the first things that we want to do before we start carpeting the box is actually flip the box onto its back. Because what we want to do is draw a line down the back of the box. And this box is going, this line is going to give us a reference uh, for when we make the seam on the back of the box with the carpet. In this case, I'm just going to measure it in half. So just put a nice clean line halfway down the box. Something like that. Now, when you go to do your box, you don't have to paint the port. But if you paint the port before you put it on there, uh, it, it just helps to hide the port and make it less noticeable when you put the carpet on it. A lot of times, you'll have this black port like that just to kind of hide it if you don't want to see it. You can paint it any color you want. You can do, say, red fabric and a white port or whatever you want to do. So in this case, we have this black paint and we have this gray carpet. Look what this looks like when it's together. So to start this process, you want to lay the carpet down with the side that's going to be on the outside on the bottom. So the nice pretty side we're going to lay that face down. You want to make sure that the edge of the carpet that you're going to start with first is totally smooth and flat, uh, you know, 90 degrees. You don't want to start with something that has a funky cut because this is what you're going to line everything else off of. Okay, so now we're going to put our box on the carpet. Like so. What we want to do is Flip it up to where it's face down, and we can see our carpet like so. You get it about halfway and center it up. And you want to make sure when you line this up on that line, just like so, you want to make sure that the rest will actually cover all the way around. Also, you need to make sure that it's center on the carpet. So when you pull this around, 
you have even overhang on both sides, like so. You don't want it to be too far to one way or the other. Once you get it set up like so, you'll go back to your beginning piece right here. You want to work it and you want to line it up to where you push it down and it fits on that line, perfectly on that line. If you try to do this without that line, uh, there's a possibility that it would be crooked, it would be really hard to cut straight later. Okay, so now we're going to start laying on our spray glue. You want to shake this stuff up pretty good. The more the better. It's also important to notice that I've sanded all my edges down, I've rolled all my corners, everything is super smooth. I did that before I painted the port, just get everything nice and ready for a nice coat of carpet. Okay, so now we're actually going to start spraying the box. We just want to spray the side we're actually going to carpet. We don't, we don't want to do the other side yet. So we'll, we'll start at the line, we'll go a little bit past the line, we'll work our way this way. It's also important to note, you want to keep the fabric, the face down the whole time. You don't want overspray on the nice, pretty outside of the carpet. So just keep it pulled out of the way, keep it down the whole time. You want a nice, thick, heavy coat wherever the seams are going to be. You want a nice, thick coverage. Pretty well even. Like I said, more on the seams. The big open arrows don't need quite as much. You want to let it sit here for just a few minutes and let it tack up. Now, ideally, with some of the spray glue, you want to spray both sides of the carpet. I've done it both ways, but I found that it works just well if you only spray the box down. Um, it can make it really hard to make adjustments if you just spray the carpet, but you want to make sure that you get it nice and tacky before you start laying the carpet on. So now we're going to start laying our carpet on. set up we'll flip the box over and we'll do the baffle one thing to note here is I want to put some blue tape inside of this port so we don't get overspray on the black paint in the port okay so we put the blue tape on the port like so if you don't put the blue tape on the port um, you'll just get overspray in there and all your nice black or white or whatever color you paint your port is just not going to look good at all that it's going to the glue is going to dry like a white color and it's going to look kind of dingy nasty okay so let's continue with the carpet we'll take our spray glue without the spray the box you want to get around the car around the port really really good there's a lot of air running past the port, so you want to make sure that the, the glue is really thick right there um, so the carpet doesn't peel away. Also around where the speaker mounts, you want to uh, get that heavy glue as well. So after you let this tack up, we're going to wrap the fabric around to the front. You want to push in on all the seams, especially around the port. We'll flip it to the back side and we'll do this last cut right here. So for this part, I'd like to take some more blue tape and mask the seam right here. You want to get glue right up on that seam. We don't want to get glue on the carpet. So I mask the seam off like so. Then I'll get a piece of I get a piece of cardboard or scrap. 
And I'll set it right here as well. I don't want any overspray on this carpet. Then we're gonna let that tack up and then we'll fold it over. Okay, so we want to roll this over now that it's tacked up. Now you can use a razor knife like this. You can get these for a dollar at Walmart. You can use one like this. These are even cheaper at Walmart. Or you can use just the razor blade if you want. Whatever you feel comfortable with. So for this cut, I like to use this one because you get a lot more force. Make sure you have a nice clean blade. What I like to do is set something like this edge on here and put this against the edge of the fabric. Now you have your seam. Pull your blue tape off. And work that seam. Look at that seam. Super nice. You can barely even tell that seam's even there. So at this time, if you want to, you can cut out some of these holes, like this one. Okay, now we're going to move on to the sides. For the sides, it can be rather difficult to do. What I like to do is start by folding it all open, like so. Putting my razor blade in the corner and drawing it to me as straight as possible on all four corners. I cut from the inside out to make it a little straighter. You can cut it however you like. You can cut it down here. Whatever you have to do to get it as straight as you can. Four flaps. Okay, now you can take these flaps and you're going to put them up the sides and put that on the bottom. Okay, so this final fold is one of the, arguably one of the hardest ones to do when you are carpeting a subwoofer box. But I'm going to show you one of the easier ways to, ways to do this cut. We're going to do the same thing like we did on the other side. More glue. Make sure your flaps are nice and down. You don't want to get too much overspray on the flaps. Just focus on here. If you have to, you'll probably see me using a piece of scrap or a piece of cardboard to put up against the edges and cover the scraps or the flaps while I'm doing the glue. In this case, you want to get really heavy spray in the middle. We'll let that tack up for a second, come back, and I'll show you how to lay it down. Okay, so now that it's tacked up, what I like to do is fold the front and the back first. The back side has a split in the seam where the carpet does not line up together. There's a way to fix that. First thing we're going to do is start at the top. We're going to make a cut straight down. And then if you peel this back, you can throw away the bottom. And these should seam together perfectly, except for the fact that there's still this gap right here. For that, we're going to hope the sides take care of it. So we're going to fold over one side, all the way down. Make sure it's nice and flat. We're going to keep note of where that seam is. 
is we're going to have to cut past that. So in this case, we're going to start at this corner. We're going to come up. Cut around the seam. Come across. I'm going to come down into this corner right here. Now that you've made this flap, you can peel off the pieces you just cut out. Now we're going to add a little bit more glue. We're going to lay that down. Push it into the seam. Make sure you cover everything. And then smooth it flat. Now we're going to take this side. We're going to fold it over. Just like that. This one should be a little easier because we don't have that seam to account for. So we're going to start in the corner. We're going to cut deep. Make it smiley. Go right to that other corner. that over. Make sure it goes into all the seams that you just cut. It's not overlapping. Now once you feel accomplished because you've done this all nice and pretty, well, you get to do it again. The side's the exact same thing. We'll start by rolling the front side and the back side just like we did the other side. On this side we actually Get this seam here to line up nice and pretty. We'll cut the excess off the edges and then we'll fold the sides over. Now on here, there's some spots we missed. We want to cover all that. So our smiley is going to have to come all the way around. this down. <clears throat> Make sure you get it into all the seams. That's it. That's a completely carpeted subwoofer box. Let's put that terminal cup in and see what it looks like. Isn't that cool? And just like that, that is our finished subwoofer box.